Okay. Um, I think might be open with that. All right. Okay. So we are holding. We said that the uh, the oh, just one second. I'm done. Okay. Welcome to the Lakuta Ranch here. Torah Chofei 25. And we're in the middle of paragraph four, Dalit. So we said that the way to to uh, defeat and bring down the um, the klipot the sitracha is by e e expressing and exposing the greatness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. and the greatness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is is expressed by the uh, supernal colors of silver and gold, which represent the sphere of Chesed and Givura. And um, now we're talking about the, the, these are the, the, these supernal colors are a quality in the light itself. It's not, it's not a, a, a keli, it's not a vessel that in which the light is received. Because the light of Kaddish Baruch Hu, um, is, there is no, there is no, I mean, it's not visible. It's not, I mean, even spiritually, it's not visible. I mean, it's only visible when it is expressed in chesed or when it's expressed in gvura, but it's a quality of the color itself, the light itself. And we said that when you give tzedakah, then it causes, it goes, it causes the, uh, we actually didn't say that yet. We said the, the, the thing is that, that the colors shine only when they are in the possession of what we call the Ish Israeli. Uh, means that it's it's a, a Jew that behaves like a Jew. This is when it 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 shines for him it's himself. When a Jew does not behave money wise like a Jew, but behaves with, with greed and with time has fallen, what happens is that uh, um, the, the money doesn't shine to him. It's just, it becomes, it, it becomes opaque. It becomes just money, that's it. There's nothing. The same thing happens uh, by, you know, by a goy, that the money that they have, they have a lot of money, they have plenty of money. Um, but they, they always want the money of a Jew. By, by them, the Jews have all the money. Why would they say the Jews have all the money? The richest people in the world are not Jewish. Yeah, they're wealthy Jewish people and they're wealthy, you know, Gentiles. It's not a, you know, why would, would they feel the Jews have all the money. It's because of the, 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 the Jewish money has that, the supernal colors, you know, that shine in, in the, 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 the Jews, in, while the money is in the Jews' possession. And that's the reason why, you know, they have uh, uh, the craving for Jewish money. But the problem is that the minute that they get it, you know, it loses the luster, it loses the supernal colors. Because even the money of a Jew that does, does not behave like Israeli, 
that by him for himself, he himself has no pleasure from his possessions because the, the, the money is for him. The money is not for where it needs to get. It seems to him, it's my money. You can't touch my money. It's not your money. It's Kodesh Baruch Hu's money. Lia Kesef Lia Zov, the, the, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says Kodesh Baruch Hu. You know, if you, if you behave as Lia Kesef Lia Zov means to me, no, me, personally, it's mine. Well, if it's mine, then you have, they have there's no time in, 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 in the money. There is, it doesn't shine to you. Comparatively, even a Jew that does not, that the, his own money doesn't shine to him, for, for a goy, the money of that Jew also shines because of the, because of the, 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 the difference in Kedusha, between Kedusha's Israel and Kedusha's Amim. So the minute they get the money, even if the Jew himself is somebody who is, you know, is a, is a greedy, whatever it is, the minute they get the money, the, the, uh, the colors disappear, the head disappear. That's why they keep on demanding more and more money. This is what Avimelech said to Sarah when he had to give her back to Avram Avinu. Here I have given a thousand pieces of silver to your brother, which is a Ramadinu. And here it is to you, a covering of the eyes. What does it mean covering of the eyes? Haino. When the money left the hands of the Goy. The Yad Israel, the Yad was from Avimelech. It came to the hands of Avram Avinu. Techef nisgalu agavnin. Immediately, the colors were revealed. Venasu bivchinas big deyesha. And it became, you know, cloaks of glory that everybody wants to look at. Hainu ksusanayim, you know, the thing that covers the eyes. Shakol Mr. Klimba, that everybody yearns to look at them. Shakol Mr. Klimbaim. That's why you see, you know, in in in, in fashion shows and uh, all kinds of things, in magazines with fancy clothing, whatever it is, because people love looking at at, at glorious clothing. And the 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 colors which shine in the money. Is the clothing of the the the? I mean, the reason why there's such a pleasure to look at glorious things. I mean, somebody passes in the street with a Rolls Royce or whatever. Um, everybody looks at it, why? Right? Because whenever there is a revelation of glory of pride, the people crave to look at it. The reason why this is happening is because the glory in, in, in any kind of glory, whether it's physical glory, it's of clothing, of, 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 of possessions, is a derivative albeit very low, but it's a derivative of the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's why when somebody has a lot of money and he has things, you know, he has clothing that are very, very uh, glitzy and, and, and fancy, uh, everybody likes to look at it automatically. They are drawn to look at them. So when the money came out of Avimelech, to the hands of, uh, into the hands of Avram Avinu, meaning that it came out of the Rishus of the, the, the Goy and came into Rishus into, of, of a Jew, then the, the, the hidden 
what supernal light, divine lights that shine in the money, you know, became, you know, started to shine again. And it became a subject for, you know, for staring, for blaring. Wow, take a look at that. And it's, and then, okay, so now we are saying is, okay, how can you make, the question now, because how can you make the, uh, remember what we're talking here is, which we're revealing, we're trying to reveal the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the purpose of it is that when the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is exposed, the kind of confusion and difficulties and hurdles that, that come up when you go between one step in, Avedis, in, in spirituality to the next one, there is the snowman zone where you get all confused and you get all, there's a dip, there's a, you know, between the, the, the two peaks, there's a trough, you know, you finish the one before you go to the next one, the clippers come up again. The way to bring them down is by exposing the glory of Yikadosh Baruch Hu. So comes the question, says the, the glory is in the Kesef Ezov, in the silver and in the gold. This is where the colors are. The colors are the, the way that the Kodesh Baruch Hu shows his glory. So the question is, how can I make my money, you know, express the glory of Hashem instead of just being money? Just, I mean, anybody that, that I don't know, everybody, anybody that ever worked with money I was I was working in a, uh, as a cashier in a supermarket, and and the money is is filthy, literally filthy. You know what? Any time that I wasn't careful, you know, uh, and I ate something, I became sick to my stomach. I mean, it's it's it's. What's 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 the big deal? You have stacks of money. I mean, what's the what does it do? In the very beginning, wow, look at it, and then it becomes it doesn't do you anything. The point is that people are running after money, uh, after things that will give them money, after fame, after whatever it is, and the 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 reason why they go is because they look for the satisfaction that you get from the wow of the, the exposure of the glorification of HaKadosh Baruch Now, what I'm telling you now is within a gather of, of possibility. I'm not saying that it's a fact. It's just something that seems to me to make sense, but I'm not saying that it's necessarily true. That is that the reason, you know, this music is very captivating and paintings and sculptures are very captivating, but there's a big difference between the, the the transportive experience of music and that of what you would call uh, uh, plastic art or physical art. In, in, the, in the case of music, we know what it does is it takes you and it puts it together with the, the spiritual quality of the source of the music. Everything the Misa has music to it. In fact, every single thing in its root is actually music. There's a song to everything. Rebbe says every Chochma has a song. Every, says every Amuna has a song specifically. I mean, you see all the regions in the world, they all have music. Um, and the Misa, the, the the most ethereal, uh, uh, spiritual level of any kind of chokhmah and, and is the music of it. 
for instance, when you tell someone, um, what did you do? Or if you tell them, wow, what did you do? Or you tell them, what did you do? Said the same words. The difference is in the music. That the music is the source when everyone, when I say to somebody, what did you do? Uh, I'm connecting that, the person who I'm saying it to, to that accusatory source within me. An accusing source within me. When I'm saying, ah, what did you do? It's he, that person is connected to the, the, the fascinated part, the, the complimenting part of me. I say, what did you do? It's that I'm connecting him to, to curious me. Whatever it is, it's all in the music. When it comes to art, I mean, painting, sculpting, the, it's not that it doesn't take you somewhere else, the way music does. You know, in music, it says, Levi. Levi is the musician. Leia said, Apam, you love the Isha, why is she called Levi? This time, my husband will accompany me. In other words, Levi is going to bring them together. Music brings you together to the source. If it's the source of music is, is Tumadik, is what they call, you know, fallen loves, you know, lust, whatever it is, then it brings you there. And if it's holy music, it brings you, you know, to holiness. But, and he, here's where the, 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 the speculation part comes in. When you're talking about uh, paintings and sculptures, this is, this brings to you uh, a ha'ora, uh, uh, an illumination from the source of where this came from and brings it to you. It doesn't take you to the source, bring the source to you. It's not for nothing that, that music is allowable, but, but uh, paintings and, and sculpting, unless it's under specific conditions, is also. And the reason, the, the, the reason that is, however, you, know, you should know that in the base of Migdash itself, the Tikkun Ezra says, in the Kodesh HaKodesh, the Holy of Holies, uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu projected his Shechina, his Kedusha, his, his, his godliness into it, because the, the walls were uh, painted with with the 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 uh, the paintings of the deeds of creation creations, it was art of the highest level. And of course, you have the Krubim. The Krubim were basically they were you know holy sculptures, and uh, every single thing in the Besamikdash was very specifically made in a way because it emanates, it emanates the, 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 the Kedusha from the source, the Kedusha Kodesh uh, Paintings and sculpting, unless it's under this, is forbidden because it, what it does, and that's the reason why art is so revered. And anybody who is considered to be an artist of any kind of note is immediately put on a pedestal and uh, within a very wide margin can get away with murder. Um, because, and this is what my speculation is, is because art represents an expression of glory that does not disappear. You can keep on looking at a painting, you know, of, of a great artist literally for hours. 
for hours. Because what you're, what you're actually looking at is you're looking at a, a, a direct projection of divine glory that is going, has gone through without the filters of Kedusha and morality. This is, this is why it is awesome. Possible. I don't know. But anyhow, but what we are talking about is how to express the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for us so we can get through the wall of Tumor and get into the next level of Kedusha. It validates Doka Shenoisen Mimamoinoin and through tzedakah that a person gives from his own money, nistaken kol the all the money of the Jew is being rectified, and then the colors, they reveal and they shine, they light, and it renders all the person's money in the, the, the silver is to me and the gold is to me. Now that the Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh, uh, is aggrandized and, and is, is, is glorified because the, the reason for it is because we started in the very beginning by saying that, you know, you have Kesef and Zov, this is Chesed and Gvura, and then we have Tiferes. Tiferes is the glory. It comes after Chesed and Gvura. Chesed, silver, Gvura is gold, Tiferes is a combination of the two. This is where the glory is. The name of Hashem associated with the Chesed is Kel, Aleph Lamed. The name that is associated with Gvura is Elohim. And the name that is associated with Tiferes is Shem Avaya Baruch which is much higher than both Kel and Elohim. So we ask the question, how come that the, the Tiferes, the, the, the level of Tiferes, is a result of chesed and gvura. How can it have uh, a name of Hashem that is higher than the spheres that come before it? And we said the answer is because, yeah, Tiferes is, you know, comes to expression physically as it were, as a result of the combination of chesed and gvura. Chesed is basically a tool. It's giving, it has nothing to do, it's, 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 there's no reciprocation here. It doesn't matter we deserve it, you don't deserve it, whatever it is, it's giving. Gvura is also a tool. It's not a reciprocating, not a reciprocative tool, meaning it blocks. Whether you're deserving or not, it does not give, okay? They are akin to the arms, the right arm and the left arm. Tiferes is their combination that brings into account the one who gets. In other words, how much should they give and how much should they hold back? Commensurately with the ability of the receiver to receive. So Lemaise Tiferes is the culmination of the purpose of the Chesed and Gvur. Chesed and Gvur are just the tools with which to get to the aim, the final aim, is to get the actual Shefa, the actual bounty, to its goal in a way that is beneficiary to the receiver. 
that's the whole idea. In other words, yeah, chronologically, the first comes after Chesed and Gvura. But ideologically, Chesed and Gvura exist in order to enable the Tiferes. That's why Tiferes has a much higher name. Arizal says that Shem Avaya Baruch represents the perfection of giving. He says the first yud represents the coin. The first hay of Shem Avaya represents the five fingers of the givers that hold the coin. The vav represents the arm of the giver as it is stretched to give the coin. And the last hay represents the five finger of the hand of the poor person that receives the coin. So the Zohar Kodesh is full with all the time is how to complete the Shem of Ayavarafu. It's 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 replete with 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 um, examples of how Shemavaya is completed through various instances. Another instance is uh, the case of um, Megillus Ruth. So the Yud is Elimelech. The, the first He is Nomi. Originally, the Vav were their two sons, Machlon and Kilian. They died and they were replaced with Boyaz. The last He, the receiver, is Rus. That Shemavaya had begotten David Amela. The, the, the idea is that if you want the glory of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be revealed, it has to come that the Yud, the Shefa, the money, the supernal colors are going through the whole process in order to end up in their proper goal, in, by the proper receiver. Then you have Shemavaya. Then the name of Kodesh Baruch Hu is complete. Then the glory of Hashem is revealed to you. Then the clip is fall down. This is what he says: Liya Kesef Liya Zo. Kodesh Baruch Hu is glorifying in in the Gavni, which is only the money of Tzedakah. Because I mean, simply is because when a person gives Tzedakah, it means he knows that the money is not his. The money belongs to Kodesh Baruch Hu. That's what a person believes. I'm by a Kodesh Baruch Hu and it's his, and I'm just giving somebody else's money. He's giving the tzedakah for, 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 for the Sarah Kodesh Baruch Hu to, to, to do the rats on the Kodesh Baruch Hu. That complete Shemavaya, that causes the, the Gavnin, which is the middle of Kodesh Baruch Hu, that are intrinsic in that money to be revealed. But it's more than just that. When a person gives tzedakah, it doesn't just completes Shemavaya and reveals the, the colors in the money of the tzedakah. It actually rectifies all his possession, all his money. All his money. Because that means the person believes that everything that I have is from a Kodesh, from a Kodesh Baruch. So when I give tzedakah, I show that I believe it. So that causes all my money to to uh, to glow. Bifchinas, Bifchinas, Bigre Yesho Milt Dokoyatan. In the Pasuk in the Novishan says, Sos Asis Bashem. I will rejoice, greatly rejoice in Hashem. Tagel Nafshi Belokai. My nefesh will, 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 will have glee, will have joy. In my maker, Kil Bishani Big for he has clothed me, the cloaks of Yesha, the cloaks that everybody wants to look at, is driven to look at, is drawn to look at and to stare. Meil Tzdoko Yatin, a coat of Tzdoko 
he will cover me with. It means through the coat of tzedakah, when you give tzedakah, when a person gives tzedakah from his money, all his money becomes big the yesha, the levushim that everybody looks at. The afilu, Rabbeinu continues, the fact that money that they're going to take from us, you know, despite us, it's considered as doka for us. I'm doing tzedaka even when they're going, you know, rob them and take money from them. Be, because mainly you can say that the reason why the Jews give them the money, uh, they're going the money, it used to be in the olden days, it used to be more, you know, the all kinds of, you know, head taxes and all kinds of special Jew taxes that the Jews had to pay. Yeah, so why would the Jews give that? In order to keep being Jewish. You know, I'd rather give my money and keep my Jewishness. So that, that means that they actually gave the money, you know, because they're Jews, means they're giving the money for Shemiz Baruch. That's why it says, Your eyes are like, like pools. And it says that, uh, uh, Rashi says that, that the these are the, the wise men who sit in the gates of Jerusalem and they are busy with the Cheshbon, with the mathematics of the the uh, the Cheshbon, the Kufas and Marzalos, you know, when the month is Iber and so forth and so on, and, and their Chochma and their Bina is visible to all, to the eyes of all the nation, like and 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 it's it it draws the people, it draws the the the, the admiration of the nations like like pools of water that pull water from its source. So that enayich enayich brechas b'cheshbon enayich zagavni. Kain, you know, this is in the in the prophecy of the uh, of the vision of the chariot. Uh, when the the prophet says that that specific items were the color of copper, he says he says Kain the color of the nechoshet. Why is it called the 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 look? Of copper, the way copper looks, so it's called the eye of the copper. In other words, what your eyes see is also called an eye, which means a naich. These are the, the the gold and the silver that everybody looks at them. They are being blessed this barchen, al tzedakah. They are being blessed through the tzedakah. She called pruta every single penny that a person gives. The star of the Ben Godel, it comes together to a great number. I feel the moment she even through the money that comes, you know, that is confiscated by the Goyim. And he calls Bas Rabin, because, you know, the daughter of, of, of the Rabin of the outside, I'm sure well is Bas Pnima. We are inside. The Goyim is Shah Bas Rabin. It's always the Mekoma Klippis. Gam Zen Nechshav Tzedakah. That also is considered Tzedakah. Moshikosov Nosar Tzedakah. Zedavka Al Shah Bas Rabin. What does it mean? On the gate of Bas Rabin, of Shutzah Rabin. Why on the gate? Bas Rabin. Why on the gate of Bas Rabin? When it says Al Shah Zan, Kshadayin Al Shah, when the money is still on the gate between the Jew and the Goy, then the money shines. Before it comes to the hand of the goy, the money is still, is still, the money still resides, the, the grace of the, of the colors still resides on the money. Afterwards, the, the grace 
disappears. One of the important points that, that need to be made here is that we keep on saying, Sos Asis Bashem, I will rejoice greatly in Hashem, Tagel Nafshi Belokai, I will rejoice in, in Hashem, in my maker. We see the same Nakuda who says, Ezeo Asher, who is the rich man, Zasameach Bechelka. The one who is happy with his lot, with whatever he has. How many times have you or have you known other people who have achieved great things? fame, wealth, I don't know what. And you go and you go like, oh, wow, this is so unbelievable. What I've been able to achieve or what that person has been able to achieve. And then that person looks or you yourself, you know, judge into yourself and say, are you happy? I'm not sad, but I'm definitely not as happy as I thought I will be when I embarked on this incredible journey. Needless to say that, that all endeavors that are, are that include in them uh, chicanery and, 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 and deception, um, or anything immoral, there's never any joy in them. The need here is for us to understand that everybody, when you ask people what they want in life, I want money, I want this, I want this, I want that, how many actually say, I want to be happy. I want to be the simple. Very few, if any. Yeah, they say, you know, um, ultimately I, I come out of the, of the assumption that whatever it is that, whatever it is that I do will uh, bring me to to simcha, to happiness. Uh, but so why don't you say, I want to be happy and I'm doing these things in order to be happy? Because we mislabel simcha. Simcha for us, I mean, some people more, some people less, but basically simcha for us is a result of favorable conditions, especially when something unexpected came about, and I look at it like, wow, this is great. But then I get used to it, and the charm goes away, and the symphony goes away. But that is not where symphony is. It's actually a long schmooze all its own on the work that one needs to do to achieve simcha. But one thing is for sure, doing things for your sake will not make you happy. Doing things for Kodesh Baruch's sake can make you happy. When you rectify your money, your money, your possession will make you happy. 
you may still you that you may still you have to still work on simcha, which is a whole different issue. But nevertheless, you will feel that you have satisfaction and happiness with what you have. If everything is done, is done for me, it's just for myself, no matter what I will have, it'll never make me happy. Let alone, it'll never actually dispel the clippers that are standing between me and happiness. So what we have so far is every person needs to get out of the Madonna, of the, the power of imagination, and to come up to the Seichel. And the Seichel, the real wisdom, first of all, it is theoretical. Then I'm working on it, making the power of my life. It's called Seichel Apoyo. It's called the acting wisdom. And then after working on it and acting on it, it becomes part of my being. It's called Sechel Anikne. That's called the acquired wisdom. It's part of my life. I'm a Shana Shabbos. I don't have to think about it. You know, should I keep Shabbos? I don't think, there's no Bechira anymore. It's already mine. I eat kosher. It's only mine. It's not, it's not even a question. When you do these, you go through these three steps, you finish the Madrega, the Kedusha of your Madrega. You have the Kedusha of your Torah and your Tfil, and you have the Kedusha of your eating and it Yivrechal, working, whatever it is. And these are two levels of Kedusha, and whenever it is that you finish, you go through the three steps, then it's time for you to go to a higher Madrega. You know, the Kedusha, the inner Kedusha of your Torah and just goes up, and to the next Madrego, and then comes the Kleepers and says, not so fast, buddy. And their confusion starts, fantasy starts, craving starts, madness starts, all kinds of demeanor starts, you know, to prevent you from going into the Kedusha. It's the peel that covers the fruit. To go through it is through the exposure of the glory of Hashem. The way to do it is with tzedakah and with simcha that the Kajbaho made you a Jew and brought you closer to tzaddikim and Tim. This is how it's done. This is Torah Chavhei in the nutshell. Nitz Hashem next week we will hopefully conclude the Torah and it's a shame, be ready to move to the next Torah it's a shame. So um, here we will, we will stop in it's a shame tomorrow evening. There'll be a share, it'll be available on Zoom. It's a shame, uh, from the Breast of Ashur.